Hello and welcome to Power Designer. My name is Jeff Giles and I'll be your guide for this Power Designer demonstration. Today's topic is on filtering a list. We'll create a list, we'll choose the details for the list, we'll order the columns in the list, and finally filter for the matching criteria. Let's get started. In order to filter things in Power Designer, we must first have something to filter. So let's take a minute and talk about object lists. Power Designer's object lists provide a spreadsheet-like interface for filtering your model objects. Lists can be filtered to provide a specified level of detail that you define. Also, after you've filtered a list, you can export it for further analysis. The model menu shows all the objects of a specified type in the currently selected model. So if I go up here and click on the model menu, you can see here we have a list of all the model objects in this particular model type. Now this model type is a logical model, so we've got entities, entity attributes, relationships, inheritances, etc. Um, had this been a physical data model, we'd have things like columns and tables and things like that. So let's say, for instance, a colleague has asked us to display a list of all of the entity attributes in a model with details like, um, you know, what entity do they belong to, what data types are used, what's the length of a, a data type, um, if domains were applied, and some other details. So let's select entity attribute as our starting object. When our list of entity attributes is displayed, it does look a lot like a spreadsheet in that it has columns and rows. As a matter of fact, you can sort this a lot like a spreadsheet. If you notice the name column, at the top there's a black triangle which is currently pointing up, which means that it's sorting by A to Z. If I click that black triangle, it now sorts from Z to A. And this works on any column in the list. In addition, I can change the column width simply by dragging the divider between two columns until I see a double-headed arrow. And then I can drag it to the left or to the right. If I quickly want to resize a column to fit the longest entry in a column, just double click and it will automatically resize to the longest entry. If you look just above the column headings, you'll see a toolbar. And on that toolbar, you'll see two buttons that look like funnels. One funnel has a, what looks like a pencil next to it, and it's called the Customize Columns and Filter button. And the other one is called the Enable Disable Filter button. We'll be using these two buttons for filtering. First, let's take a look at this Enable Disable Filter button. It's a toggle switch. If you click it once, it applies a filter. So here you can see that our list has been filtered down. If you click it again, the filter is turned off. So it's a toggle switch. Also, another thing you'll notice is that when I toggle it on, along the column headings at the top, you'll see a series of buttons. One looks like it's got a funnel applied, and the other three look like they've got downward pointing triangles. This is for in-column filtering. So what we'll do next is we'll take a look at in-column filtering. In order to do this, I'm going to turn off an existing filter. Don't worry, I'll talk about this later when we get to this topic. Now, let's suppose you need to quickly filter on a column to determine if a domain was applied. We want to filter this list by a certain value in the domain column. When we click that downward pointing triangle, we're presented with a uh, drop down with some options. The first one at the top is a criteria. Right now it says in list, but we can change this. We've got equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, not in list, between, not between. For now, we're going to stay with in list as our starting criteria. And the next thing is we want to see where a domain has not been applied. So if we look at these checkboxes here, we have one checkbox that says select all. I want to deselect everything, so I'm going to uncheck this checkbox. The only thing I want to select is none. And then click the OK button. What you'll notice here in the domain column is that we've filtered on none. And none with the two greater than less than symbols basically means that no domain has been applied. So now I can quickly see which entity attributes currently have a domain and which ones do not have a domain. 
One thing that you'll also notice in the domain column is where we used to have the downward pointing triangle, we now have uh, what looks like a funnel symbol. That's an indicator that a filter has been applied to this particular column. If we'd like, we can remove the filter simply by clicking on that button that now has a funnel and choosing Clear Column Filter. And now we're reset back to where we started. Now let's turn our attention to the Customize Columns and Filter button. That's uh, this one here with a pencil next to it. Now you can choose which columns to display in your list. You can also reorder the columns and you can filter the rows to be displayed. When we click this button, we get a Customize Columns and Filter dialog box. And it's got a couple of columns. There's a column with a D, something called column heading, something called operator, something called expression, and one with a U in it. We're going to take a look at each one of these things. But the first thing I want to take a look at is displaying certain columns. So right now we've got a check mark next to name. And if you look in the list of entity attributes, you'll see that the name column does show up. But let's suppose we also want to add to this the code and the parent. By placing a check mark in each one of these column headings, they'll now display in our list of entity attributes. Also, notice at the bottom there's a check mark next to show column filter buttons. If you want to disable the column filtering, you can just turn it off by selecting that checkbox. When I click on OK now, you can see that we have name, code, parent, data type, length, and domain. Now, the parent column is actually telling us what entity the entity attribute is located in. If I expand the column width here, or double click, you can see that we've got entities for product, employee, customer, etc. Well, it probably makes more sense for me to have this display at the beginning of this list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder so that parent now displays before name. So we'll click that customize columns and filter button again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to place the mouse pointer in the parent cell here and click once. That activates the cell. Now down towards the bottom you'll notice a series of arrows. We're going to use these arrow buttons to adjust where parent appears in the order. So this time I'm just going to click the single arrow button and you see that parent moves above code. If I click it again, it now moves to the top. If I click the OK button, you'll see that we now have an order of parent, name, code, data type, length, and domain, which is what I wanted. Now let's set an operator so that we can filter this list. So we'll go back to the Customize Columns and Filter button. And this time we're going to be taking a look at the two columns here called Operator and Expression. Let's suppose that uh, we need to filter this list by data type and length. And I want to display all the character types that are longer than or equal to 20 characters. Now let's suppose we want to filter this by data type and by length. I need to display all character types that are longer than or equal to 20 characters. I can type this in directly or I can actually use the wildcard characters to help me out. Power Designer supports the use of both the question mark and asterisk characters when defining a filter. So now let's go and set up that filter. If I scroll down, I'm looking for data type and length. And you can see here in the column heading, there are two check marks next to data type and length. And if I go to data type, what I'm looking to do is to find all data types that are equivalent to a character data type. Now, that could be straight up characters or that could include var chars or things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the asterisk character followed by char followed by another asterisk character and that should get us char and var char as well. Now let's go ahead and set the length here. So in length I want to have everything be I believe it was greater than or equal to. So we'll look and we'll find a greater than or equal to sign. And then we'll use 20 as the length of character. So we'll click in there and type 20. 
So now I've set the data type and the length and we're ready to see the results. So let's click on the OK button. And now we can see here that if we look in the length column, everything is 20, 40, 255. So nothing less than 20. And you'll also see here that we got character as well as variable characters in our results set. Now let's go back to the dialog and I'll show you what that last column, the U, is for. What you'll notice is that when we defined a filter, it automatically put in the U column a check mark. Basically what U means is used. So the current filter being evaluated is the data type in the length. If I scroll up to the top, you remember that uh, earlier I turned off a certain filter. Well, here I've got a filter using the question mark and asterisk. I want to find everything that's got exactly four characters, so that's what the four question marks means, followed by a space and then an asterisk character, which indicates anything that comes after that. Now, this is currently not enabled. That is, I'm not using it. But if I click in the U box here, it's now going to evaluate this criteria as well as the criteria for the data type and the length. So now when I click on the OK button, we've limited the list to last name, last having four characters, followed by a space and anything else that comes after it. And notice that the length is 40 characters, so it's greater than 20. For now, let's disable the filter. And let's get back to our colleague who needed the list of attributes. So what we're going to do now is take this information and send it out as a report. So once you've filtered everything, set the column orders and things like that, you can simply take the resulting list here and send it directly out to Microsoft Excel. To do that, you just click on the Excel button here in the toolbar. And when you do that, it will export the results out to Excel. And then you can open it up in Excel and you can do things like pivot tables, create charts and various other analysis of these lists. So there you have it. We created a list of filtered objects that you can now export to Excel for further analysis. And that concludes today's Power Designer demonstration. I hope you found it useful. For more information about Sandhill Consultants and how we can help you with your modeling practice, see us at www.sandhillconsultants.com. Thanks for watching.